right, it is Friday night, and you know what that means. We're here. Talladega for the Talladega Super Speedway. Round 10 of the Australian NASCAR E-Series Friday night trucks, powered by Beat the Dark. Mental health matters. Uh, now, practice has been run around the qualifying stages. I see about 27 cars uh, registered for this trucks, registered for this race. So that is... Uh, going to be quite the handful. Let's get to the live screen. Now, uh, I think some of our series regulars, uh, Darren McKenzie, Andy Barber, they were the two quickest guys up the front uh, during practice, from what I can see. We don't have any times in yet, but the boys just getting around their second lap, so we should start seeing some of those times coming in. Working. Appreciate your liking the broadcast are moist. All right, let's uh, see who else is out there. No offense to Mr. Darren McKenzie, the O2 car there on our screens. Andy, but Jay Barber's got the first time up. That is five five nine two four five six five eight five for Aaron Gilbert. Nick Hill five six fifty six eight there fifty six six eight one fifty seven four five three for Kelvin and Clark. Colin Bruns has put himself in second with a 55.990. We're going to see a few more times start to come in. That is the 10 of Dave Douglas on our screens. As I wind up that famous Mud Mule coffee, Bulbeth TV coffee. <laughs> There's the 229 Adam Johnson. He's currently running in 10th with a 50. No, 11th. He's just been pushed down. He had a 56.921. Che Mello, 56.850. 56.860 for uh, Ruben Phelps. Uh, pushes, actually, they've moved from 11th, 10th, 11th to 11th and 12th. Has Ben Vickers slides in with a 56.804. Quick time is still 55.924. Andy J. Barber. Adam Malone, 55.941, 55.983, Colin Bruns. We see a couple more times start to come in. Darren McKenzie, we mentioned him in practice, 56.010, so he's in fifth place. Uh, had a slightly quicker lap time, but I imagine was drafting and, and practicing the draft on, on practice, and that's where that extra speed has, extra time has come from. But uh, for now, he will be starting at fifth on the grid. cars 19 have managed to put a qualifying time in 55 924 of course Andy Barber's a quick time 56 306 Aston Hurley is the uh, other end of that field All right, there we have it. We've got 19, 20 cars that qualified. 55, 924, all the way down to 56, 964. Alex Tobovix, Brian Bluntdale, Gary Wellman, Jake Jackson, Scott McClintock, Nigel Seidel, Naughty Tompkins, Matthew Budd, Ryan Carlson, Marty Mitchell, and Jared Williams did not qualify, but they are 30 cars on the field here tonight. This is going to be awesome. 94 laps of Talladega. Front row is going to be Andy Barber and Adam Malone. Second row, Colin Bruns and Nick Hill. Darren McKenzie and Nathan Button on the third row. Ruben Phelps and Daniel Stevens. Fourth row, fifth row, Stephen Williams. 
Why did I get confused there? Oh, because it was Daniel Stevens and then Stephen Williams. Shay Mello, that's the fifth row. Stephen Williams, Shay Mello. Sixth row, it's going to be Adam Johnson and Lachlan Okijo. Ben Vickers and Derek Jacobs on that seventh row. Eighth row is going to be Kelvin Clark and Dave Douglas. I just realised we've still got race sound on. Let me quickly just fix that. I've been doing Cheers, brother. Good luck. A little bit of racing this week at Talladega myself. Uh, where'd we get to? Eighth row, Kelvin Clark, Dave Douglas. Ninth row is going to be Henry King and uh, Aaron Gilbert. Aston Hurley and Alex Dilgovic on that tenth row. Eleventh row, Brian Blood down, Gary Wellman. Jake Jackson and Scott McClintock on that 12th row, 13th row. Nigel Seidel and Noddy Tompkins. I told you we had a lot of drivers. You see how far those rows go back. Matthew Budd and Ryan Carlson on that 14th row. And our 15th and final row will be Marty Mitchell and Jared Williams. Yeah, I was going to say, let's get a look at the grid, but... Get the wrong... There we go. That's a good view. Looks like we're just waiting for the remaining cars. Oh, no, that's not a good view. To take the field. Beautiful day here in Talladega. Look at that. Blue skies, a little bit of clouds, nothing too crazy. Uh, why can't I get the cameras back down on the track now? Oh, jeez. There we go. start so uh, we will get down this back stretch in a moment in the three and four pace car will leave the track and uh, we will be up and running Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You get to choose where you watch. We are the um, broadcasting arm of the uh, Roberts. Pff, I went to broadcast something else. The, the Australian NASCAR E Series Friday Night Trucks, powered by Beat the Dark. Mental health matters. Round 10 of 19. We are 10 races into this season, and things are heating up. Six drivers have secured playoff position, playoff run. Let's see who might be able to get a win here tonight and join them. All right, pace car drop below that yellow. We're going to get this one underway. Remember, 94 laps, so it's not going to be too crazy for the... Uh, first, I don't know, maybe even half of the race. Hopefully, just uh, the boys will want to get it running and uh, be cruising. We've got teammates Andy Barber and Adam Malone on the front row. That is going to be uh, interesting to see which one's going to want to try and get into line with the other first. Moist Mauler says it looks nice and sunny on the track. Does race time of... Ah, there, that, that explains it pretty uh in the afternoon race time on the track as the boys start to line up in that line you saw the teammates get down onto that line together Colin Brunson is going to be the meat in that sandwich I assume that's one nine, one nine. thank you for the, uh, the one I appreciate it I hope you like what you see and this is pretty much standard for any Friday night truck racing two lines they just get into that line and race it out uh, for the first however many laps of the race first you know third first half no one does anything crazy what's the best bet what's the bet for number of cautions look I think Talladega um, it's a tough track to caution there's a lot of cars a lot of the cautions can come from that high line three wide uh, or that high line passing and generally you go up into the uh, the thing. So I'd say three. I reckon three cautions. Um, 
unless there's any more than that, some of those will be under the yellow line and no cautions will be called. Who are you here to watch, 1-9? Who, uh, who have you got in the series? Track or in Logo. Tompkins. Looks like one of the cars didn't take the track and the 34 of Ryan Carlson somehow right off the pack. I can see him on the track map. You won't see that, but uh, he's uh, just coming in entrance try over portion now as the boys are in exiting two so he's unfortunately going to fall off that pace as the race goes on hopefully the caution will come out before the other cars actually catch up to him as he laps see that inside line a lot bigger than the outside line i'm i'm with them i'm very much more of an inside line driver one x says he's got that's uh, sorry one nine's got uh got many four cautions See who gets it. So, let's see. Oh, here's Jake Jackson. One, one six. Currently in 22nd, but uh, is he inside or outside line? Let's have a look. Get a good uh, line down on him. Oh, there he is on that high line. 916 on our screens, but the 616... Oh, sorry, the 116 on our leaderboard, I believe. Where is he, the 916? That's hard to tell. 916, there he is. There. The 19 on the back of the truck, the purple and orange. Pretty nice car. A bit of a leaky issue, but nothing too crazy. Able to race that line, and it looks like uh, my bad. <laughs> Thanks, one line. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm looking for him, and it's like one one snow. All good, brother. I reckon uh, he'll race his way up. But uh, Friday night, the internet is popular. It seems at the Jackson House, so uh, we'll have to see how he goes in there. Hopefully, he can sort that out so he can make a challenge. The 42 and the 27 there. It's Lachlan Akijo and Derek Jacobs. We're looking at the 10. Dave Douglas just behind him. We've still got a bit of a blink up the front with. I think that's Nick Hill, our race leader. Coming out of four again. We're on lap five of 94. It's about to be lap of six. Really just uh, the beginning stages still... Really just trying to get your tyres warm at this point and uh, get them with good temp, good racing line and uh, just concentrate on that. Nothing too crazy. That outside line, though, is really starting to work together. Let's jump up to the lead there. As we see, that is the 167, Nathan Button. He was pushed up there. It looks like by Daniel Stevens and Shea Mello. And uh, if you've, look, this is early in the broadcast for me tonight. You go, Shay and uh, Daniel Stevens, show him what they've got. Uh, I don't like it when someone gets pushed to the front and then abandons the people that push them up there. So Nathan Button, he got the, uh, he, he got that lead due to Daniel Stevens and Shay Mello helping him out and uh, they abandoned, he abandoned them uh, and just dropped down as soon as he had the chance to try and take that lead. They kept that line running. And uh, look at that, they've almost got both those trucks past the uh, the 157. But the one thing you will notice is that Daniel Stevens will not drop down to take the lead. He will stick with his racing partner, because that's what you do in trucks. Uh, look, it's up to you how you race the race. Uh, it's uh, it's just a personal thing of mine that I just, I, I really, you know, I've... I've I just think that if you're pushing a guy for for the win, then give him the win. Don't push him for the win and then uh, it's too easy. But then at the same time, that second place car, the 70, of Shea Mello, is a North Melbourne AFL team wrap. And uh, not a fan of the team. We'll just leave it at that. Coming up to lap eight of 94. Almost a tenth of the way into another 
nine lots of ten laps to go. This is going to be uh, a fairly epic battle, but the outside line, you can run a little bit higher if you've got the push, especially on Talladega, that middle line. Uh, you'll keep some really good draft speeds. You won't lose. Uh, you can lose three to five miles, uh, sorry, kilometers an hour running on that inside line, trying to stick to the yellow. You see some of those boys just up from it a bit. That's just to keep the car a little bit freer on those speeds. And uh, while it's working, uh, not as good as they would like because outside line is almost first uh, to fourth. The 52 of Henry King just dropping back to sixth there as the uh, 157 and the 167 and the 27. No, the 012. So many car numbers. Oh, my gosh. Uh, comes the, along the bottom line there as that inside line starts to get its draft sorted out. It's got about a five-car draft going on. Looks like there's at least a good four-car draft on the outside, maybe seven if those three at the back will line up and, and join it. This is what we're going to see. This is what I was talking about at the start of the broadcast. We won't see a lot of crazy stuff, just some good two-wide racing as the boys knock off a number of laps uh, from this uh, race at 012 trying to give the 167 of Nathan Button as much push as possible waving across the bum a little bit like that can if you can hold it be all right but if there's any contact sometimes when you've got that left to right movement uh, it can and that's just if you're a bit low on the bumper like he was there on Nathan Button uh, you can send the car in front of you turning a little bit, so he's going to have to watch out for that. See the 10 has uh, joined into that inside field pack. That's Dave Douglas. I wish I had the States listed as to, because, like, obviously, everybody, uh, as far as I can see, yes, everybody in this race. Uh, well, with the exception of Derek Jacobs. I think Derek Jacobs is our sole uh, American. He's out of the Northwest. Uh, but everyone else registered as Australia and New Zealand, so in fact the states, we didn't know who was, uh, what states we were representing, because then, uh, then, just for no apparent reason at all, Inside line got their rack together and uh, have sort of pushed their nose a little bit in front of the outside line draft wise. There's the uh, the 86 Brian Blundell we see just above him, Scott McClintock, Colin Brown behind them. Austin Hurley. The mid pack racing. I do like the triple ones colours, Colin Brown. I do like that orange. Uh, and the 96. As well, Jared Williams just there, there on the outside line, one back. That mixture of the black, orange, and green is uh, that's sort of thing I, I know. It's, it's, they're not necessarily colors sometimes that you would imagine go well together, or they could be just very simple colors such as white, red, and black. But geez, the uh, the paints go a, a long way in, uh, in giving the car a bit of character. Me, my truck, my truck is wrapped with uh. My famous handbook, Racing for Dummies. But still not much going on. Just lap 12 of 94. This of course, the Australian NASCAR E-Series Friday Night Trucks. Powered by Beat in the Dark. Round 10 of 19 of the round, so uh, this is the, uh, I guess, sort of the middle round, the, the, the halfway mark, so to speak, might still come. Seems at least six, seven cars have secured themselves a run in the playoff race, but uh, still got a few more races to go for the entries after the race. It's gets there. We see Ryan Carlson. Uh, we spoke about him earlier. He was off the draft, and unfortunately, um, the guys have caught up to him. His best bet here is to just let him by and slot him behind them, wait for a caution. Lucky Dog will get him back on the lead lap, get him back on the pack. Uh, but at least now he's got a bit of draft speed to run with. 
Get those lap times happening, tip off a few laps and uh, get it going. 119, Noddy Tompkins, not sure what happened to him, but he's in a similar situation to what Ron Carlson was about 10 laps ago, where he's going to be just coming in around the three and four as the boys get to the start line. That backstretch looks deadly as those cars all come running down it in. Look, we've got a safe formation. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a two day chance to take We have our favorite host of uh, the world's favorite Twitch game chat, talk, sip, thingy, chat show, sip, chat, play. Uh, so don't. How are you, brother? Good day in the Phillies on the Fridays. Seriously, sip chat play Twitch. Official TV slash sip chat play S I P C H A T P L A Y. Uh, the greatest uh, friendliest personalities on Twitch. Easy. And if you like your Jackbox, your sort of interactive uh, games, then they're the people to check out. Uh, the hazard that uh, that racing broadcasting company might actually be on there live as soon one day next Thursday. Send my message, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So, uh, yes, chat like it, Twitch and follow. And if you're into books, if you've got kids into books, also. Would be remiss not to say, moosedumps.com. Go check it out. A uh, collection of short stories that Darren has wrote in. We'll say it's a similar theme, possibly might be similar to another series of young adult sort of horror novels back in the day, but no, Moose Dumps, a purely original and amazingly funny uh, set of stories. I've got the first volume, I think there's three volumes now. I've got to get off my butt and get the next two. But uh, even Rockstar has uh, written the story, so definitely check it out. Moose Dumps. Moose says the Dumps, D U M P S. Alright, coming up on the start of the 17th lap. Not a lot has changed. Nathan Buttons, our race leader. Daniel Stevens, second. You killed Derek Jacobs and Dave Douglas in the top five. Henry King, Ben Vickers, Jake Jackson, Scott McClintock, and Aston Hurley are the top 10. Brian Blundell, Scott McClintock, uh, on Aston Hurley, he's dropped a 10th of 12, sorry there. Uh, Muddy Mitchell, Aaron Gilbert, Jared Williams, that's the 15. Andy Barber, Stephen Williams, Adam Malone, Darren McKenzie, and Adam Johnson are the 20. Lachlan Okijo, Shea Mello, Nigel Seidel, Alex Delbovics, and Kelvin Clark is 21 to 25. We've got Ruben Jobs, Matthew Bud, 26 and 27. That's the last of the lead lap drivers. Uh, and Noddy Tompkins, he might be almost a lap down and run past the police. A lap down to 28 to 25. Yeah, definitely, definitely available Thursdays. There, I forgot all about that. Um, completely free Thursdays. I sometimes like, I used to get up and race, but lately I haven't been. And I, I saw Rockstar's post about it not being on. Uh, this morning or last Thursday night for you guys, and uh, I was like, hang on, I'm free. So, yeah, I would like to do that. All right, we've got three wide back there at the rear. That's the uh, the 98, Colin, uh, no, Stephen Wins, Colin Bruns, and I believe Marty Mitchell. And uh, no, it's hard to tell who that other car was, but it is definitely Colin Bruns and uh, Stephen Williams there. Going three wide a little bit early, but if you got to run and you don't want to get rid of it pretty early in the race, Talladega's got three nationally wide lanes, so you can do it if you want. Uh, so the cars are possibly just getting a little bit too much hot air on their engines and needing to go up a bit high to cool them down a bit is another possibility. the 
19th of 94 laps as the boys come down the backstretch of the Australian NASCAR E-Series uh, Friday Night Trucks powered by Beat the Dark. Now Beat the Dark is uh, come on board uh, to be the sponsors uh, of this series and uh, obviously mental health matters is their tag on it. It's definitely uh, something near and dear to my heart. Um, some degree but um, the inception of Beat the Dark it stems from a profound awareness of people grappling with uncertainty anxiety and depression Beat the Dark is a message applicable to all walks of life beyond its existence as an iRacing team the Beat the Dark logo stands independently the power of iRacing the camaraderie of fosters uh, to provide souls during challenging times iRacing and online gaming service platforms that unite individuals from diverse backgrounds and age groups. The distinctive colours of the logo, face, represents the modern day crusader advocating for social change. We hope that by this awareness, individuals can embrace their true selves and initiate honest conversations. If our efforts can assist even one person while endeavour. So uh, let's extend a warm thank you. Uh, to beat the dark as they join uh, the Friday Night Truck Series. We can support their message. Uh, it's not just a tagline, it's not just a spiel uh, to make someone sound good, but it, it is, it is. Uh, I could not humbly agree more. Darren, Darren Mutt, uh, finest example. Um, Jeez, I would dare say it's over a decade that we met and became friends and uh, lifelong bros since. We um, have to see them every day, visit them to be a part of their lives and to get something out of being uh, their friend, whether it's just warm fuzzies or, or what, but yeah, online uh, gaming. Uh, All right, we're on lap 22, back to the race, boogity, boogity, boogity. And uh, Daniel Stevens is our current race leader, that inside line just starting to push ahead a little bit. Derek Jacobs, Nathan Button, Henry King, Nick Hill. They are the top five. You can see that on the ticker on the top of our screens. Yes, and now, so uh, yeah, so Daniel Stevens, Derek Jacobs, Button, Henry King, Nick Hill. And we can see the top six coming along. Scott McClintock, Dave Douglas, Aston Hurley, Ben Vickers and Jake Jackson. A little bit unorganized, that high line. We can see just two cars, the 98, I believe, and the 70. That's Stephen Williams and Shane Mallow. Uh, obviously, a little bit quicker than potentially, a little bit quicker than the cars that are in front of them uh, if they were down on that outside line below them. But uh, choosing to stay a bit high, they do have the two cars there, so draft not too big an issue. Pardon me, it looks like the boys leaving a little bit of space there. The 96 of Jared Williams is back a little bit, so uh, they could drop down and just join that upper outside line, but choosing not to. Uh, pushing up a bit though that middle line I want to call the outside so it's the inside line the outside line and the outside outside line uh, the outside outside line just seems to be a little bit more organized as we can see there then the in middle outside line and uh, they are actually starting to push up in fact it looks like oh I thought one of the uh, outside line guys was going to go out out so I then just uh, that was the uh, Hurley car to about 10th there must have dropped below the line and uh and let them pass but uh 
there he is there behind the 70 now. Might have been a little bit too hot up there, a little bit too hectic, so he's jumped out. The outside, the outside line still battling away with the in, the, in, the middle outside line, the 27 and the 52. That's Derek Jacobs and Henry King. Uh, that is Bosey at 25 of 94 laps. But look, we said it before, Talladega is a wide track. You can, there's, there's clearly three lines there, so use them if you can. I feel like whatever extra speed they feel like they're getting on that outside, outside line, it would be better for them in the actual uh, superfile train in that middle outside line. Just, just, they do seem to be battling better than the middle outside, but that inside line is cooking. Daniel Stevens, Nathan Barton, Nicky, Dave Douglas, and Ben Vickers. Oh, and it looks like the 9 at 1 at 6 at Jake Jackson. There you go, 1-9 if you're still around, buddy. Jake Jackson getting himself up into the thick of it. He's now in uh, what appears to be 7th spot. Inside line, his position's going to change a few times just to that outside line, but they are working together. And, uh, getting Oh, there's been a crash. It's, it's sort of start to occur. There's another one, I believe. As a caution has come out, looks like a couple of cars there, the 10 and the 7, almost a bit of contact. But I believe that was the 52 of, uh, of, of Henry King. Let's go back and just have a better look at that. Get a good view of it. There he is there, the 16th behind him, the 27. So that one came from the middle in the outside line. Can't see how it happened. Oh, it looks like he might have gone up to the top line. He did. And let's see if it comes from here in the next turn. And then drop down the 98 and 70. Ah, oh, it looks like he went to drop down a little bit. The 27 was there. A little bit of net code, possibly. So just got to go around the track a couple of times. It's going to give the guys that are in the incident enough time to get in and out of the pits and uh, get lined back up. Look for Ryan Carlson to try and get his uh, lucky dog in this stage as well. Get himself back on the lead lap. He'll be happy with that. And then uh, we'll get to the one to go when they want. Line up double wide to get this race restarted. I will be back in just one moment, guys. This is the Australian NASCAR E-Series. Friday Night Trucks, powered by Beat the Dark. Mental Health Matters, lap 27 of 94. Not sure exactly what the fuel window would be. It's generally about halfway, so I'd say 44 uh, to 50 laps would be the uh, fuel window. But some of the boys are uh, lifting. Uh, actually, everybody, bar Ryan Carlson. Ryan stayed out so that he could uh, get his uh, wave around back in, get his lucky dog, and now he's gone into the pits. So every race car... In this race, all 29 of them have been in and out of the pits this time around. That means the uh, reshuffle, the auto reshuffle. Some of the boys are only taking tyres, some taking one set. Sorry, one half, taking two tyres instead of four. Some not taking fuel, some taking fuel. So let's go through the lineup now as it is. Pardon me. 
Nathan Barton and Daniel Stevens first and second. Stephen Williams, Daniel and Stephen need to uh, separate themselves. That's confusing me. Dan Nathan Barton, Daniel Stevens, Stephen Williams. It was like William Douglas, Douglas Jackson. No. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Dave Douglas and Jake Jackson. That's the top five. Jake has raced his way up into the top five after that first 28 lap run. Nick Hill, Ben Vickers, Derek Jacobs, Brian Blundell and Andy Barber. That's the 10. Adam Malone, Jared Williams, Darren McKenzie, Lachlan Okijo, and Aston Hurley, that, the uh, 11 to 15. Then we've got Aaron Gilbert, Alan St Alex, sorry, still Bovix, Adam Johnson, Marty Mitchell, and Matthew Budd. That's the 15 to 20, 16 to 20, 21 to 25. Ruben Phelps, Nigel Seidel, Kelvin Clark, Scott McClintock, Colin Bruns, Shay Miller, Ryan Carlson, Henry King, and Noddy Tompkins round out the rest of the field. But some of those guys going back in to the pits. I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe not happy with what they did or... But before that lap was completed, it didn't look like everyone had already been in and out. It is one to green as well, so uh, boys wanting to really get back up and uh, get to it. Naughty Tompkins, the only car a lap down. Also, I know Henry King is as well. He was involved in the incident. He's still in the pits. So he might have some serious damage to have to repair there. Front row, of course. There's going to be Nathan Budden and Daniel Stevens. Stephen Williams and David Doug Dave Douglas, sorry, on that second row. Third row is Jake Jackson and Nick Hill. Ben Vickers and Derek Jacobs on the fourth row. Fifth row, Andy Barber and Brian Blundell. Adam Malone and Jared Williams on that sixth row. Seventh and eighth row. Darren McKenzie and Aston Martin, then Aaron Gilbert and Alex Stelvovix on that ninth row. Adam Johnson and Marty Mitchell. Colin Bruns and Lachlan Urquijo on that 10th row. 11th row is going to be Ryan Carlson and Ruben Phelps. Nigel Seidel and Matthew Budd on that 12th row. 13th row, Kelvin Clark and Scott McClintock on that 14th row. Shay Mello uh, and uh, looks like it's going to be Noddy Tompkins as Henry King is staying in the pits for the time being. Getting some repairs, I would imagine. Once again, thank you everyone for tuning in to Bogus TV, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. This is the Australian NASCAR E Series every Friday night, 8:15 Australian Eastern. Got the Friday night trucks powered by Beat the Dark Mental Health Matters Round 10, Talladega 94 lap race. It's going to be lap 30 when we get this one back underway. Race car has left the track. Restart zone. We can just see that coming into view at the bottom of the screen there. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. Oh, there's been a big crash. Sorry, I went radio silence. I had to quickly sneeze after that intro. But uh, it was hard to see who was involved in that. I did see... Um, I thought it was a 30 numbered car. Maybe the 34. Nope. All right, let's see if we can see what happened here. start okay we come into one and two ah oh, there we see it straight at the bottom of the screen there the 57 he tried to come down in front of the 98 but unfortunately wasn't any room and uh that is what's brought that caution out a second caution of the night i called three one nine called four we're halfway between me being wrong and uh, one nine being right. So we'll have to wait and see, but 31 and 94, the two cautions come out very early, very quickly.
that's uh, the 52 of Henry King. He came out of the pit somewhere at that point, but looks like he's heading back in, as is a number of other cars. We see the uh, the 916 of Jake Jackson, the 7 of Ben Vickers, 96 of Jared Williams. Jared was involved in that incident. The 5 of Andy Barber, the 099 Aston Hurley, Adam Malone, Alex Torbovic, Darren McKenzie, Aaron Gilbert, Adam Johnson, Marty Mitchell, Ruben Phelps, Lachlan Aquijo, Ryan Carlson, Matthew Budd, Kelvin Clark, Nigel Seidel, Scott McClintock, Shay Mallow, and Daniel C. Stevens. Uh, so a number of cars. Just getting that little bit extra five more laps of fuel. They, they use five laps of fuel in that uh, time. And uh, just that little bit of an extra top up can provide the difference in what is, uh, you know, what could be a green flag stop for uh, fuel at, towards the end if they need it. Cars rolling out of the pits there. Pretty much everyone bar the top seven has gone back into the pits five laps since the previous caution or the previous option to go into the pits. Uh, so Ty, we're not a factor at all. It's just those guys just, I guess, getting that dribble of extra fuel. It doesn't matter where you go to on the grid out of a caution this early in the race. There's still plenty of time. Just don't do what I did today in my previous truck race. My, my crew chief got in my head, told me that we should be expecting a podium finish, blah, 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 and uh, and laps to go, I was in about fifth, so I'll go for it. And uh, just, yeah, crash happened in front of me, couldn't avoid it. Had already been in the pits and uh, had about a minute repairs prior to that, so I was, yeah, just had to park it, just park it, as my dear friend Sean Nichols would say. Sure, if it's just trying to get a drive through through the pits to go to the rear of the field a bit, and these guys repeat performance and back into the pits after going in the lap previous. If anyone in the chat can give me a heads up on what that might be about, they know what that is. But uh, it looks like we're one to green, so we're going to get this one back underway again. Nathan Button, Dave Douglas, front row, Stephen Williams and Nicky behind them. There's Derek Jacobs and Brian Blundell, Colin Bruns and Alex Telbovix, Ryan Carlson, Lachlan Akijo, Matthew Budd, Ruben Phelps, Andy Barber and Eric Gilbert, Adam Malone and Marty Mitchell, Darren McKenzie, Scott McClintock, Adam Johnson, Nigel Seidel, Kelvin Clark, Shay Mello, Jake Jackson, Austin, Aston, Austin, Aston Hurley, sorry Aston, Ben Vickers, Daniel Stevens, Jared Williams still in the pits. As is uh, Henry King, Noddy Tompkins. He's just catching up to the field. Looks like the 57 of Daniel Stevens is rolling out. That's just going to leave the 96. Jared Williams and Henry King, the 52 in the pits. Oh, there we go, Mr. Henry King. Letting us know from uh, HJR, Henry James Racing. 52 has been twisted now. 25 minutes of repairs. Look, I don't want to tell you how to race, Hen, but uh, I would definitely uh, just watch a bit of racing for 25 minutes. I reckon some guys are going to drop out and it's going to leave a few laps in reserve for the 52 to get back out there and at least maximise some uh, finishing position points and uh, could possibly get themselves up into that top 20 portion. depending on what happens. Let's see if we can get this restart underway. The last restart from our first caution made it until uh, turns one and two before there was a crash and the second caution was called. Green flag is waved. Lap 34 of 94 underway. There it is. That is why you are the king, my friend. 
get it fixed and sent back on the track, Henry says. Hey, Jackson back there with the third. I can tell that because unfortunately he's still got a bit of a blink going on there. So uh, he'll race his way back up into the top five again if he can. Leader looks like he's been pushed by Nick Hill. Nick Hill is still the sideline. Well, there's about five other cars. Two behind the outside line, three behind the inside line. Somehow the inside line looks a little bit. That's uh, right, the outside line. Despite having less cars in the draft line, seems a little bit more speedier. So, to keep that extra, say, you know, two to five k's. Start of the second third of this race, lap 36 of 94. Once again, I expect it to be similar to what we've seen in the last 30 laps, and that is some just good two lane racing. Maybe some pushes and changes of lanes and leads and things like that, but nothing too crazy in the terms of passing or uh, pressure. I guess the two P's. Two and eight laps down. Looks like the 98 of Jarrett, 96 or Jarrett Williams is a lap down on the track. 26 other cars on the lead lap. Daniel Stevens, he's a bit off the pace, they're not on that draft. The car up high has significant front end damage. Good that is, but they went very high to let the other cars past. I that might be the uh, 27 of Jared Williams. Henry's still getting his car repaired. Looks like Noddy Tompkins has parked his. machine. He's in the high line, so uh, could be fifth, could be tenth. 
Hard to tell with the way those inside outside lines run. You see the couple of cars there, teammates on the uh, inside line. The uh, five of Andy Barber, Adam Malone, Darren McKenzie was also there. They're grouping up in that mid pack there. You see the red, white, and blue, uh, red, green, and blue cars. The five, the one, and the uh, O2. Look out for them. So that's a three car pack right there. And if you get three cars operating in a draft together, they are going to be very hard to beat. up the front there, Nick Hill and Nathan Button, maybe even Stephen Williams. Oh, Nick Button, uh, we saw he was a little bit loose, a little bit wobbly up the front. Check this out, just to see if there's anything building here. Way like mark 47 48 will be our halfway mark number of laps. A lot of guys out there on 14 to 10 laps with the tire wear and fuel use and pitting not really a concern at this stage. Biggest time out on the track so far is Stephen Williams. In sixth place on the board, but about third on the inside outside line, depending on which one he's on. 51 4 1 2. Quickest last lap, though, Matthew Bud, all the way back in 19th. 52 7 3 9. Coming up on the 57 car, he just wants to start to finish right up ahead. He's up high. We're running along from uh, Marty Mitchell's car there. It's so hot, there's flames of blue, not Melbourne blue. Sorry, Shay Mello. Yeah, I go for the Hawks, so say what you will. Oh, thank you for the like on Twitch, uh, for the follow, sorry, uh, Tom97 Williams, Tom Williams on, uh, on Twitch, appreciate you, brother. Oh, big crash, 70 got caught up in that, but not uh, the start of it, it was more the uh, the pull-up, did the sevens down there as well, Ben Vickers, a number of other cars, so there it is, I said three cautions, one nine said four. That's it. We can't have any more cautions for the second half of the race or I will be wrong and I don't want to be wrong. I'm, I'm not wrong. Come on. If I pause the broadcast, if we don't focus on the cautions, did, did they really happen? No. Nah. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to hit the little Robert TV room. While uh, this caution is on, I'll be back in just a moment. This is the Friday Night Trucks, powered by Beat the Dark. Bobbeth TV, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitch, all brought to you by the Australian NASCAR E-Series. And as 1-9 just said, still got a lot of laps. Yeah, when there's more than half the laps remain, you've still got plenty of race to go. All right, I'll be back in just a moment, guys. One sec.
right, 45 of 94, very close. Looks like I reckon we'll be at the halfway mark, actually, when we get this one back underway. There's a couple of cars in the pits. Aaron Gilbert, Ben Vickers, Scott McClintock, Dave Douglas. Uh, looks like Derek Jacobs, Jared Williams as well. That's not. That is... Look at the race car. Look at the truck behind the pace car there. Just in front of our race, current race leader, Marty Mitchell. It is the 52 of Henry King. Welcome back out of the track, son. He's 15 laps down, but uh, there's at least one person ahead of him he can pass in 10 laps. That's Noddy Tompkins. Uh, maybe Derek Jacobs as well. Looks like he's a lap down and has retired potentially. Uh, so this is anybody's race. Henry could certainly get himself back into uh, a few extra point spots here. He said he was going to do it. There he is. The boys put a lot of work into that truck. Get it back out on the track. All right, Marty Mitchell and Andy Barber up the front. Adam Malone and Aston Hurley on the second row. Third row is going to be Darren McKenzie and Nathan Button. Stephen Williams and Colin Bruns on that fourth row. Fifth row is Alex Delbovics and Matthew Budd. Ryan Blundell and Ryan Carlson on that sixth row. Seventh row is going to be Jake Jackson and Lachlan Akijo. Eighth row is going to be Ruben Phelps and Nick Hill. Adam Malone and Shea Mello on that ninth row. Tenth row is going to be Aaron Gilbert and Nigel Seidel. No, Darren, Daniel Stevens, sorry. Uh, Nigel Seidel and Kelvin Clark are on the eleventh row. Thirteenth row, fourteenth row rather. Twelfth, I'll get it right, eleventh to twelfth, Bob. Scott McClintock and Ben Vickers, Dave Douglas and Jared Williams on that 13th throw. 14th throw is going to be Henry Kings. Derek Jacobs and Naughty Tompkins have retired. So we've got 27 cars still in this race, 25 of them on the lead lap. It's coming up on the hour mark and they're almost the halfway mark of the race. This, of course, the Australian NASCAR E-Series Round 10 of the Friday Night Trucks, powered by Beat the Dark. This is, of course, Talladega Super Speedway. 2.65 miles of uh, some awesome, awesome truck racing action. Coming out of four, pace car will drop below the yellow very, very shortly. Boys will get into the tri over, they'll get to the Geico start, restart zone. We'll get uh, this lap, lap 47. Um, our last lap of the first half of this race underway. 47th lap up, 47 still to come. Start so in the 651 got a great jump on the boys. We do see the team of uh, I believe that's Adam Alone and Darren McKenzie on that inside line, the red and the green car. Do they have they do have the blue there as well? So that's Andy Barber, Darren McKenzie, and uh, Adam Alone. So uh, I did say to look out. I don't know what team that's called, but we'll call them the Tiana Holiday Park Trucks. Uh, they've made their way up into second, third, and fourth on the side line. That is going to turn out to be very interesting. As I said, you got three cars. Uh, that is a very effective drafting line. And uh, if your teammates, then holy cow, that's going to make it even better. I do believe they have another teammate just a few stops back. Jake Jackson, congratulations. You have hit over a hundred blinks in this race. And have not upset any lines. That is tremendously uh, crazy. A couple of trucks changing lanes there, checking out the inside because of the run, moving up to the outside line. That outside line got a great run, dumped about three or four trucks. Uh, Austin Billy, Alex Stilbovics, 
Colin Bruns and Blind, Brian Blundell went from seventh to fourth uh, with that outside line run. The boys, uh, the boys, I say the boys, Andy Barber, Adam Malone, Darren McKenzie, that team have fallen all the way back to basically the back ten. It's going to be just 45 laps to come. We've had some lead changes. We've had pack changes. I'm really hesitant to lock anyone into a good spot just yet. As 1-9 said, we do have a lot of racing still to come. A lot of laps still available to us. Tristan, uh, Tristan Allen, I'm sorry, I didn't see that you uh, won the broadcast. Uh, appreciate you, brother. Chris Standridge says, hello, people of Australia. You guys rock. Great racing. Thank you, Mr. Christopher Standridge, for those of you that think that that name is from the, uh, the uh, you know, I have a lot of it's history of no. Uh, of racing and broadcasting, Chris Andridge, uh, currently the host of the Senior Circuit's uh, NASCAR Cup Series of Wednesday Night's American on, um, no, Tuesday, Wednesday Night American, sorry, um, on, uh, on Mud Mule TV. And also races in the Knuckleheads I race, and I think he's run a, won a race or two. Alex Dilbovix is our race leader. Colin Bruns has got him up there, I believe. Then there's Marty Mitchell, Dave Douglas, and Austin Bailey. Aston Bailey, five. Ben Vickers, Aaron Gilbert, Brian Blundell, Shay Amello, and Nigel Seidel. That's the 10. We're currently looking at Matthew Budd there. Well, we were on that angle now. It's a bit hard to see him. But uh, him and Nick Hill there, at 11th and 12th. Just in that mid pack. 337, that is uh, Matthew Budd behind him. Yeah, yellow 012, Nick Hill. Oh, you like trucks on next year? Yeah, no, no trucks, always trucks. Um, I was telling this story earlier today in a truck race actually here at Talladega. Um, I'm interested in my accent in the official race and uh, yeah, I told him that I, I came from the dirt. So back background to just to race it. We're up on a dirt track. And um, discovered NASCAR and uh and the road over stuff the trucks is uh, uh like lap time wise and uh and whatnot, race time wise the Xfinities and the, the trucks are somewhat similar. Um the Xfinities have a higher top speed and uh laps and sort But no the trucks the trucks just they're really fun. I really had some good close right and I had some exciting, uh, exciting races. And I think most, if not all, of my official wins on the road have come from trucks. And I do have a cup. Just a cup. Four of 94. We've still got 41 laps to come in this epic super speedway encounter at the Talladega Super Speedway. 
for the Australian NASCAR E-Series Friday night. Trucks powered by Beat the Dark. Uh, I don't have a lead count or a leader count, but we've had a number of different leaders uh, in this race. No one line has been truly dominant. Um, if I had to sort of give it the points at the moment, though, I would say the outside line has been the most cooperative and therefore the quicker line. Um, we just had our last restart about 10 laps ago, and uh, the inside line had really ripped up, and the, uh, the outside line managed to push about five cars past the, uh, the inside line run. So that's what we see. You should see at least one, maybe two, if they're smart and give room to that person, but four to five cars, uh, that is a heck of a run. The 69 of Nigel Seidel, my boss, co-owner of the Australian NASCAR E-Series, is out there in the Bessie truck. It's like a cow print, or could be Dalmatian, Bob. You know, come on. Anybody's game, 40 laps to go, 39 rather. So one more pit stop. We have to think of one pit stop to come, possibly. A couple of guys out there on a 25 lap run, uh, or 20, 24, 25. That's Aston Kemp, Hurley, Marty Mitchell, and it looks like Daniel Stevens, Andy Barber, Adam Malone, and Darren McKenzie. That three car team. Still together, uh, but just all the way back in 22nd, 23rd, and 24th after the uh, restart where they were in about 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. But I don't think they're going to be as there as I say. Three car pack is, uh, is going to be deadly when they want to be. And right now, I feel like they just want to sit back and watch some of these laps tick over. the 86 Brian Blundell he is uh, he got trapped up on that high line looks like there's a little bit of space to drop down into but uh, hasn't done so yet so obviously not too concerned about being up there but uh, no car oh, I was going to say no car with him so no draft but there's a car that's just slotted up onto that outside high line Trucks just uh, put him on a great show for the last 57 laps. Just three cautions so far. That was my pick. Our dear friend 1X, he picked uh, four. One, six, and Jake Jackson, who is currently, where are you, Jake? Back up in 15th. So racing his way up through the field now. Because there's two lines, that could be basically seventh or eighth. Uh, just depending on the line and the run that line gets. There he is up there, 916. We see him at the high line. Up behind the mobile one. Scott to the top. Looks like a truck hit the wall back there in the background. Nothing too crazy, it seems, but uh, looks like I think it was the 98. Stephen Williams. Alex Still Bovix and Colin Brun still doing their thing. Dave Douglas though. Drops down Nick Hill as well. Alex Shilbovic is a bit big on Bruns. They drop back to third, fourth, and fifth as Nick Hill uh, takes over. No, Alex Shilbovic has gone. No, I'm going to stay up here and battle for this lead. Thanks. Down the bottom line, it is uh, Nick Hill. And uh, I believe 
Dave Douglas. Cars there, just trying to see the uh, numbering on it. Nine, hard to tell. Might have been the 86 Brian Blundell, just uh, drifting up the track a little bit. Much the 99 Aston early. There he is there on our screens. He just. Uh, you get a bit relaxed and carry that extra speed and just uh, that slight different angle will just change that turning circle so much and uh, you can understeer the heck out of it and just shoot up the track. Still only lost uh, two drivers, Derek Jacobs and Noddy Tompkins, 28th and 29th. Henry Kings got himself from 29th back up into 27th, uh, unfortunately for now. Oh no, he has one more spot still. Noddy Amishin currently with the pits, three laps down, so if uh, he stays in for another 12 or so laps, Henry can make a spot there as well. Aston Hurley coming to 31 laps, Andrew Stevens coming to 30, Andy Adam and Darren also coming to 32 laps. So, uh, set up a few windows 45 to 50 laps. Um, that's 18 laps. That's still a little to come. Uh, so, a late pit definitely looks like it might be the right of some of the guys. They're going to want to do it under caution. Um, but at also this stage, it's even got those niggly bits out, and uh, oh, the 111 just dropped below the yellow there. Dangerous. Jack Jackson also still blinking away there. So there the uh, potentials for a caution. But, uh, so these guys may have to pit under green flag conditions. Four, three caution, 31 still to come. Boys, uh, still trying to stick pretty orderly, but at the same time, we are starting to see uh, some more strategies, some more racing going on. A lot of passing and a lot of uh, all the uh, 20, what is it, 20, the uh, 203, sorry, 203 getting a little bit loose there. That's Aaron Gilbert. I saw him as he was coming out of uh, four there, carrying a bit of speed. The car turns quite off a little bit. We'll do that. Had that race in the today as well, where I got tapped in the rear and uh, it just got a little flighty. It wasn't like it was off the, the, the wheels were off the ground or anything, but just enough for it to 
get a little bit of an air bubble under and she just floated down the track and how I missed everybody, I don't know. Kept it green, but um, yeah, just, just, just bumped and it just got a little bit of floatiness to her and off she went, oh, she was scary. That's the sort of thing these boys need to look out for that draft and tire where it was run. 20 to 21 laps is top five. That's how many green flag lap run of laps they've run on these tires and fuel they've used. Aston Miller is at 16, five laps, the same as Marty Mitchell and uh, a few of the other boys around the 20s. There we go, those 30 odd lappers. Uh, Andy Barber, Adam Malone, and Darren McKenzie, they've stayed out. But Aston Hurley, Martin Mitchell, they've gone in. This is Matthew Fudd, Lachlan, and Keisha, Ruben, and Phelps, Stephen, and Williams uh, all going in to the pits there. Looks like Brian Blundell as well. On the green flag position. 28 laps to go. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, the last thing you'd want is a caution. Now, these guys are good drivers, and uh, we saw an example of that there where they managed to hold everything up and keep it going. But, jeez, uh, that's the closest. You did not want to see that while you're in the pits. Thinking, oh, God, if a caution came out now, that would kill uh, the run of a lot of guys who did go into the pits. front definitely going to have a headache the top 10 they're on 24 laps of fuel and tire wear and uh, there's 27 to go that puts it right around that pit window Coming at two close on lap 69. 94 is the total, will be 25 remaining. Oh, it looks out the 10. Dave Douglas down below the yellow. Got a bit loose, had to wait till it uh, really caught itself. Oh, he could have got up there, I thought. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure why he hasn't come up above the yellow yet. Yeah, there he goes. remain on the uh, lead lap, the quickest lap on the track, still 51-412 Stephen Williams, quickest last lap 848 by Daniel Stevens, and I'm sure they did it on purpose that's that whole Daniel Stevens, Stephen Williams again Alex Del Bovix is out of the race, leader Nigel Seidel, Nick Hill Che Mello, Colin Bruns that's the five Dave Jackson, Nathan, and Button, Ben Vickers, Scott, and Dave Douglas. That's the 10. Kelvin Clark and Aaron Gilbert round out the 12 on our lead lap. And as I just mentioned, Jake Jackson. Uh, let's have a look. Where is he? 
He's fourth on the outside line there, just above Ben Vickers. Side line really starting to get its pack together. This is a little bit wider on the cameras. If we can't see that a bit better. Oh, the uh, one of the cars there going up high. I believe that might have been uh, one of the lap traffic cars, but I couldn't quite tell. I'm trying to get a bit of a wider camera angle. Nine laps worth of fuel usage. Nigel Seidel has moved into the race a lead. Alex Delberg fell back to second. Jay Mello, Nick Hill, and Colin Brunt still all there for the top five. But uh, they're going to be looking at their fuel tanks. 22 laps remain. They've used 28 to 29. So it's going to be a very, very interesting. Sidell's moved back to third. Alex Delbovix is our new race leader. We're currently sitting around the uh, back half of the top ten. Nathan Button is the 167 on your screen. 651 of Marty Mitchell in front of him is a lap or two down from the 19th. Behind Nathan, there's Scott McClintock. There's Ben Vickers at the bottom of our screen. Ryan Carlson just above him in the red truck. Just 20 laps remain as we start lap 75 of 94. Boys coming around onto the back stretch. Alex Stilbovic, Nick Hill, Nigel Sodell, Shane Mallard, Colin Bruns. Nothing has changed with the top five. Jake Jackson, Nathan at Button, Scott McClintock, Ben Vickers, Kelvin Clark, David Douglas, and Aaron Gilbert still in 12 cars. Lap. Andy Barber's back there in 13th. Darren McKenzie, Adam Malone, Lock Joe Ruben Phelps and Adam Johnson. They're not quite a lap down. They're about 40 seconds down. Uh, at a lap down, though, we do have Austin Hurley, Marty Mitchell, Daniel Stevens, and Matthew Budd. Ryan Carlson, two laps down. Three laps down. Jared Williams. Brian Blundell, seven laps down. 14 laps down. Stephen Williams and Henry King, 17 laps down. Just the two retirees so far. Derek Jacobs and Noddy Tompkins. up there I'm not sure what happened but we are back those of you counting along at home uh, Jake Jackson not to pick on him but 170 blinks that is something else that is even more look at all these cars dumping down 
onto the infield. 31 to 32 laps in, and they've gone. I need fuel. 19 laps to go. Some of those cars are lapped down. They've really got to work themselves back into it. Andy Barber, Darren McKenzie, and Adam Malone, especially. Lachlan Akijo, Ruben Phelps, and Adam Johnson are going to join Nathan Barton up the front. Nathan Barton, he's in the same situation, so he's maybe thinking, I'll stay out a little bit longer. But there's that red, blue, and green pack. Told oh, you not to worry about them. They were just going to do their thing, and uh, it looks like they've got a few extra hanger on as Lachlan Akijo and... Uh, the 06 of Ruben Phelps. I see a number of cars coming out of the pits. Jake Jackson, you know that's in there in the purple 916 machine. But uh, we're going to have a new race. Uh, let us, Nathan and Button, heads on into the pits there as the other lads are starting to come out. We're going to see if that's going to pay off or not. But uh, Andy Barber, Darren McKenzie, Adam Malone, Lock Nakija, Ruben Phelps, that's the new top five. And boy, they have come out of nowhere. They're only 11 or so. Actually, what's happened? No, they haven't. They've gone. Where are they? Adam Malone. So something's happened to that pack. As soon as they called it, they've uh, they've fallen back. So it's uh, well, there we go. Up the front, everything's updated. There they are on my standings. The Nathan Button, he is our race leader. He's got the uh, 23 of Ron Carlson behind him, but at the same time, Andy Barton had a well ahead of the 167. So that might change. Soon, as we come out of the uh, three and four run, Just trying to work out where everyone is on the leaderboard. I believe Andy Barber's that race leader, Darren McKenzie, Lachlan Akijo, Adam Malone, Ruben Phelps, but uh, we just wait for the start finish line for everything to update. There we go. Adam Johnson, Dave Douglas, Shea Mello, Nathan Button, and Scott McClintock. That's the 10. Oh, it's still baby strength. Aaron Gilbert, Colin Brunson, Nick Hill, Ben Vickers, Kevin Clark, Daniel Stevens, and Marty Mitchell is your 11 to 20. Aston Hurley, Matthew Bard, Ryan Carlson, uh, Jared Williams, Brian Blood, Dustin, and King, and Derek Jacobs, and Noddy Tompkins rounds out the remainder of the standings. It is lap 79, lap 80 about to begin. At that one, 15 still to come. Cars are out on the track, 20 on the lead lap. We have a race on our hands. Looks like the Lock Nakijo and Ruben Phelps, they've moved up to the top line with the uh, 10 of David Doug Dave Douglas, is it? Yeah, Dave Douglas. Sorry, Dave, you knew. I haven't committed your name fully to memory yet. <laughs> and the 70 of Shea Mello down the bottom. It's Andy Barber, Darren McKenzie. Uh, let's have a look there. And uh, Adam Malone. Sorry, Adam. How did I forget that name? As well as the 229, Adam Johnson. And I believe the 98 of Steve Williams. And uh, possibly... Just trying to work out who that track is. A truck is up the back there on that inside line. Can't quite tell. Got the one hour, one and a half hour mark of our broadcast. Still 14 laps to come. The race, just the three cautions. They were all in the first half of the race. This last half has been fairly smooth sailings. Looks like his teammates, uh, Lachlan Akijo and Ruben Phelps, versus uh, the opposing team of Darren McKenzie, Adam Malone, and uh, Andy J. Barber, the leader of that inside line pack.
Chopper Cam just really giving us a good bird's eye view of this racing up the front. I'm going to leave you with Chopper Cam for just a moment, guys, while I head off to the Little Bobbeth's room, and uh, I'll be back. We're on 84 of 94, 11 to go in this Australian NASCAR E-Series round 12 race at Talladega Super Speedway. This is Friday Night Trucks powered by Beat the Dark. Live on Bobbeth TV on Facebook, YouTube and the Twitches. We have got ourselves a battle as we get to the dying stages of this race. Lachlan Akijo and Ruben Phelps. Uh, Dave Douglas, looks like also the 70 is Shea Mello versus Andy J. Barber, Darren McKenzie, Adam Malone, and uh, Adam Johnson on the inside line. Looks like Lachlan and uh, Ruben really got that run going. Let's get back down to the uh, racetrack though for the sounds, because it sounds better. There's 10 to go. We're in a dirt track race right now when I, when I get excited with five to go. This is the five to go for these boys. <laughs> 10 to go here. You've got to really start to make your moves because uh, you have time to make it and then enough time to hold it. You can't just rely on getting there and getting there at the right time. So this is going to be fun to watch. Lachlan, Akijo, Ruben, Phelps. Two-car team versus the three-car team. They drop down in front of that three-car team. Andy Barber, Darren McKenzie, and Adam Malone. So, uh, that's going to affect that challenge. So those three cars, look at this. Try and slot up out of that run. Get the three car run against the two car run. The three cars will beat him every time. Or the five giving the 06 a bit of a push. He's got nowhere to go, so you've got to be careful with those uh, bumps. Because, of course, you are trying to just put a bit of pressure on him and say, hey, mate, I'm here. I was there where you are, and I want the spot back. Ruben Phelps just had the same thing done to them uh, that they did to some of the other guys. Dave Douglas and Shane Mello now are race leaders. One, two, but uh, look like Andy Barber and team were going to go up high and pop out and get a run. Adam Malone looks like he might have stuck himself up a little bit too high there. He's popped out of his run with Darren McKenzie and Andy Barber. A little bit too curious. The boys didn't go up with him. He's now stuck up there himself. Like he has a god, Adam Johnson, up there with him as well. 229 machine. Let's see how well those two Adams can team up. With eight to go. We'll be so seven and a half, really. We're coming down the back stretch in the three and four. Pretty cool that and a full lap to go. Sure, where the 337 and Matthew Bud was going down below that line. Don't really uh, go down there for a look, Matt. Uh, <laughs> you go down there to cool down or get out of the way. But, 
uh, just seven. Just seven to go. Lap 88 at 94. The teams have had the lead right now, though. It is uh, Lachlan Keijo and Ruben Phelps. It looks like uh, the uh, team of Andy J. Barber, Darren McKenzie, and Adam Malone have grouped back up again. They're up on the high line now, the outside line, three, four, and fifth. Three, four, and five, rather. A, B, and three. They're up there behind Lachlan Keijo and Ruben Phelps. It looks like. Uh, Darren McKenzie really helping uh, Ruben push Lachlan as they get to the uh, front of that pack. We're running along with our previous leader, Dave Douglas. Looks like the uh, boys have left one of the other guys up there. So just uh, Ruben, Darren McKenzie and Andy Barber at the moment down on that inside of the line. Here comes the North Melbourne machine, Shay Mello. up there at outside line in front of him. Kingsman Racing is the 10. Dave Douglas with the super cheap truck going. Don't want to jinx it, but I'll oh, oh. Feel like I might get it right there. 190, just about three portions in. Six to go. Make that five. Make it five to go. Why don't we we'll, we'll make it five to go? Lap 90 of 94 underway. Five more laps to remain. That three car team of Darren McKenzie, Andy Barber, and Adam Malone have got themselves into the race lead. The 229, Adam Johnson, he hooked onto the back and has come for the ride. Dave Douglas and Shay Mello back there as well. Fifth and sixth. Lachlan and Kijo, Ruben Phelps, they were a team that was in the lead. They're now seventh and eighth. Nick Hill, Colin Bruns, Aaron Gilbert, Nathan Button, Scott McClintock, Alex Torbota, Ron Sardell. In the 16th place, Jake Jackson are the uh, cars on the lead. For that much, which will be the biggest. Daniel Stevens, as Austin Hurley are behind them. We've got Matthew Barge, Kelvin Clark. Oh, we've got two trucks coming off the track. 203, Aaron Gilbert. It looked like um, the possibly the 012 of Nick Hill. We'll go on the 203. And uh, let's rewind back and have a look. See what happened. Oh, there we go. See the 111 just below the 012 there. 203, going to make the same line. They're three wide. 34 came down, wasn't enough room, and enough cars got a uh, little bit of contact. That uh, oh, the triple one he goes onto the roof, but uh, just sends a bit of a tidal wave back through those cars. There's our fourth, damn it, damn it, damn it. I was wrong. One nine, he picked four cautions, With four to go. It's going to be a green white checkered finish. Those of you unfamiliar with the green white check and finish, that is uh, two laps. Green lap, uh, where a caution can still be called. One full lap, and then the white flag lap, which is the last lap of our race. A 94 lap race, likely extended to 96 uh, to do so. Just because of the uh, four uh, caution laps that come with a yellow flag. Cars are going into the pits. Jake Jackson, Aaron Gilbert, Scott McClintock, Nigel Side, Dale, Nick Hill, Colin Bruns, and Ryan Carlson. 
Up the front, though, Darren McKenzie, Andy Barber, Adam Malone, Aaron Johnson, Lachlan Akijo, Dave Douglas, Ruben Phelps, Che Mello, Nathan Button, Alex Tilbovix is our 10 for this uh, green, white, checkered finish attempt. All right, 18 cars, still definitely in it. Uh, we covered the top 10, Darren McKenzie, all the way down to Alex Dilbovix, but then behind them, the uh, remaining lead lap cars are eight of them. Uh, Marty Mitchell, Ben Vickers, Daniel Stevens, Aston Hurley, Aaron Gilbert, Nigel Seidel, Jake Jackson, Scott McClintock, and uh, Matthew Budd. Just coming up on the start finish line here. I think I'm actually on the lead on the uh, lead session. There we go. Wonder Green been extended out to a 95 lap race. A 94 will be a green flag lap. 95 will be a white flag lap. Adam Malone, Andy. Ah. All right, let's try English this time, Bob, instead of Bobby's. And Adam. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> God, talk English. Sorry, it was my second language. My first, apparently second. Uh, Adam Malone, Andy Barber. They are teammates, but they'll be on the front row together. Behind them will be their teammate, Darren McKenzie, and then Adam Johnson. Lachlan Akijo and David Douglas on that third row. Lachlan's going to be loving that, because right behind him, Ruben Phelps, his teammate, and Shea Miller will be on that fourth row. Fifth row, Nathan Button and Alan S Alex Still Bovix, Marty Mitchell and Ben Vickers on the 6th row, 7th row. Aston Hurley and Daniel Stevens, Aaron Gilbert, Nigel Seidel on the 8th row. Jake Jackson, Scott McClintock on the 9th row. 10th row is going to be Matthew Budd and Kelvin Clark. Uh, looks like Nick Hill and Colin Brunson on the pits. So uh, 11th row, Jared Williams and Ryan Carlson. 12th row, Brian Blundell, Stephen King on that. 13th row, Henry King by himself. Let's get this one back underway. This car leaving the track. The boys will get to that star finish line. We're going to get this one underway green white check it finish originally a 94 lap feature race now 95 just sitting on the start the restart zone right now as the boys come screaming by this is the uh, finish line looks like uh, Adam Malone MJ Barber Darren McKenzie off to a great race. They are really gunning for that one, two, three finish. Remember, this is a green, white, checkered run here. 94th lap will be our green flag. A caution still can be called if there is a crash on this lap at the moment. At the moment they cross that start finish line gets a lap 95. We must have a finish. No yellow flags. Be a run to the checkered flag. Oh no, something's happened there with Darren McKenzie as he gets loose. Nothing too major though in terms of the race. As we get to the start finish line, we are gonna have a finish. It is Andy Barber and Darren McKenzie.
still alive up in that front at run. It looks like he's alone. Like the teammate that fell out of the pathway with them. He's uh, up there on that high line, outside line, falling back the one car. But the third place car is now Adam Johnson, the 229. They are three wide as far back as you can see in some places. but they couldn't bring Adam alone all the way along for the ride. They did their best as we come through the tri-oval. There's a little bit of washing going on by the seven, but the five is going to push the O2 out through the tri-oval. They get the one and two there. Darren McKenzie, Andy Barber, Rocky McDejo, looks like, no, Adam Johnson, sorry, gets third, Ben Vickers fourth. Alex Delboni's finishing in fifth, Ruby Phelps sixth, Marty Mitchell in seventh jake jackson eighth ninth adam malone uh Lachlan akisho finishing in tenth and we've got the 11 to 20 matthew budd nathan button dave douglas aston hurley nigel seidel aaron gilbert daniel stevens shay mellow scott mcclintock and kelvin clark and then the remaining nine cars 21 to 29 jared williams brian carlson colin bruns nick hill Ron blundell stephen williams henry king uh, Derek Jacobs and Naughty Tompkins retired a little bit earlier, and we did have a 30th car, but he didn't take the field. That was Gary Wellman. What a race. Taylor Dagar does not fail to disappoint. Congratulations, 1-9, on uh, picking the successful number of... There's the 2 Darren McKenzie. He's very happy. Let's get up to him doing his uh, celebratory burnouts. Mm -hmm. Uh, the um, yeah one nine picking the uh, picking the NAS the NASCAR count the caution count nailing it on the head jump up to the Discord we'll of course give the boys a little bit of time for them to all get in there I find which one it is. We'll just wait for those boys, see if any of them are available for an interview. Imagine Darren McKenzie and Andy Barber very happy with that one two run. Adam Malone, uh, very close to coming along for the ride as well. Uh, looked like he was leading that. Uh, Chad, Chad Beesinger, another one of the guys in uh, a number of races that I've broadcast, but uh, yeah, he agrees definitely trucks, um, and I think so as well. Next gen Xfinity. Is it next gen and Xfinity? The two separate cup cars. Next gen cup cars, Xfinity, and then trucks. Um, yeah, I, I, I just think the trucks drive better. I don't know. All right. Looks like. Uh some of the guys still on the track, so we'll just give them a little bit longer. Uh, to see if they're going to come along for an interview. Uh, that was a pretty crazy race here tonight. Um, trying to find the skeezy wheel to see where we're going to go next. Here we go. Oh, that's the super speedway. We want the trucks, Bob. All right, so we got... Oh, that's right, Dover and Kansas uh, coming up over the next two weeks. And it's uh, Darlington, North Wilkesboro, Charlotte, Worldwide Technology, Kentucky, Iowa, Nashville Super Speedway. And then we wrap it up at Chicago Land in June 28th. All right, looks like we might not have an interview tonight. So congratulations, Darren McKenzie and Andy Barber taking out the one and two for their team top three uh and adam johnson uh so tough luck goes to uh adam malone he was out there for a long time but just uh 
got a little bit caught up in that pushing lead and uh, very nearly uh, had a bit of an instant. Oh, here we go. No, it looks like as I talk through, we get started to get someone into the green room. So we'll, uh, oh, it does help if I'm actually in there as well. There's no point dragging someone into the green room, broadcast room, if they're not there. Um, all right, we'll start off with the second placed car. Started front row, was pretty quick in qualifying tonight. Um, I think your quickest lap on the track, 51.02, which was barely, I think, five hundredths of a second off the quickest lap. Uh, 51.658 was your last quick lap, Andy. Uh, that was quite the race you and the boys had tonight. You could see that you, Darren, and, and Adam Malone definitely had a, not necessarily a plan, but but you had a situation where it was the three of you and, and you worked that three car sort of run beautifully, whether it was to fall to the back and just let the race sort of play out or whether it was get up the front and test it out and see how it looked. But uh, you boys were up there a couple of times, both at the end and, and mid-pack of the race. Uh, it's it's got to feel pretty good, especially on a super speedway, having that sort of backup, having that support, knowing the guys around you, uh, you know, their teammates, you can rely on them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, definitely coming to uh, the super speedways, uh, definitely reliant on your teammates there and uh, working st through the strategies and uh, where the cautions fall is, uh, you know, a, a lot of the key to it. And uh, I thought that we were going to make a mistake there and, and not pit, but uh, luckily we had a late caution there and could top up and move on. But uh, overall, very happy with the car speed to get pole and uh, yeah, very dice in that last lap pushing D-Mac there. Uh, got him loose. So uh, yeah, never want to fence my team, mate, but uh, that's got to definitely be a contender for save of the year. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. No, and, and that was Adam, wasn't it? I was trying to work out which one it was and I think... No, nah, it was Darren. Oh, it was Darren. Um... Because I was trying to work, because it was usually either yourself or Darren, generally Darren in the lead uh, of that three-car pack. And I just saw, I wasn't sure if it was a bump or if it was just that, you know, too much speed. He just washed out a bit. But, yeah, um, how he held on to that, how that, uh, how ever, it, I think that was a bit of a credit to everybody on the track at that stage. Because, yeah, uh, he was uh, tank slapping going backwards, which you don't often see. Uh, and to, to hold that and to keep that running, um and to get back into it was uh, was uh, definitely, yeah, definitely the highlight of the race for me. Yeah, definitely at that restart, I just said to him, look, you know, he was in front of me. I'm, I'm the pusher in the team, so nine times out of ten, I'll be in behind pushing. So uh, that's my job. And, yeah, obviously, sometimes when we're doing, you know, over 300 clicks an hour around this track, you, a slight little bump can get someone off. So, uh, yeah, luckily didn't fence him, and um, the, the car snapped back in the right direction, and he got back down, and we could finish the job. Definitely, definitely. Now, uh, it looked like Ruben and uh, Lachlan uh, Kijo were really uh, sort of, I guess, not your only competition, but definitely your main uh, competition. Uh, and then there was also, I think it was uh, Dave Douglas and uh, looked like he'd teamed up with, I'm just scanning the leaderboard to try and remember who it was. I can't remember. But uh, at the start of the race, uh, you guys were a little bit further. Well, no, you were up there. At the start of the race, there was a few guys that would use that outside line and, and, and drop down without the person that got them there onto the inside line to try and just, you know, take that early race lead. And uh, that's a big bugbear of mine. Like, I don't, you know, crap on the drivers for it, but it's definitely something I think that uh, you shouldn't do. It's, it's poor driving etiquette and uh, will leave you stranded if you do it too early in the race. But uh, it looked like there were some good, at least two, you know, it was you, the three car, car team, but a couple of really good two car teams in Ruben and, and Lachlan and then uh, Dave Douglas. And as I say, I forget the 70. It was the 70 who was, um, oh my gosh, he's a new That would have been Shay Mello. Shay Mello, that's it. Um, so yeah, so there was a couple of good little runs there where the outside line um, would just drop down. We saw towards the end of the race, you guys did go up to that outside line to use that to do the same. But was that a bit frustrating, sort of doing all that work, knowing you had a good three-car pack and, and having those outside lines sort of, you know, use a five-car field to push themselves and get down in front of you and, and, and take the lead? I know it's racing, but is it annoying? Um, not overly annoying. More so just trying to work out what speed's up there and, and how it works. I mean, we definitely knew that our main contenders were... Uh, well, the guys we were up against was Ruben and um, Lockie towards the end there, and um, they're always fast. So um, we definitely knew that those were probably the guys um, we had to try and beat at the end. And 
add a sprinkle of Dave Douglas in there as well. He's a very good driver too. Um, great, great to see him in the series too. He doesn't do too many, but uh, it's great to race with him. And uh, yeah, no, um, I knew we were fighting those guys towards the end and they kind of had the high line there and we kind of sussed out what it had. And, you know, it, it kind of, they got past us, but it took, you know, six or seven laps to really get it done. And then it kind of mixed things up again. But um, that last green white checker certainly um, split everybody who was working in a team because we were working two by two and three by three at the time. So exactly. that really, that really changed it up, split us in different lines. And then, yeah, with a two laps to go, we kind of had to scramble. And I just said to DMAC, listen, mate, I'm just going to get behind you and I'm not lifting. So whatever happens, happens. <laughs> and uh, yeah, lucky he, uh, he crossed the line in the first place. Definitely do. Yeah, it looked a bit hectic coming uh, out of four down that try over run for the start finish line. There's just, you know, it was very uh, three deep, three wide deep uh, throughout the pack as all the cars were trying to find that quick line to get to the run. And then uh, you guys popped out side by side and uh, secured the one, two. And uh, yeah, it was a great, great, great race. So uh, congratulations. This is the halfway mark, actually. We've done uh, this is our 10th race. So we've nine in uh, then this race and nine to go. So, uh, uh, it's it's got pretty quick, and uh, I think that's a credit to you guys always putting on a great show, whether it's the short tracks, whether it's the super speedways, or or whatever uh, it is. Now uh, we've heard about a couple of the guys, obviously Darren and uh, and Adam, but friends, family, sponsors, mate, they go a long way in making a successful team and uh, and help us do what we do. Who do you need to give a shout out to? Uh, just a shout out to uh, firstly Nigel, Jace, and uh, the rest of the league here, and uh, obviously yourself for the time doing the broadcast we'd like to go back and watch that through and uh obviously all the competitors that turned up tonight 30 trucks at talladega's uh really good yeah. result and um yeah it was great to see some great racing like even d mac and i were talking in team chat towards the end there that you know it, we had a really hard fought battle towards the end there that was you know clean and fair and um very fast so uh credit to those guys but uh yeah just thanks to our team uh southern stars esports missions excel garage tiana holiday parks uh, RBI trading cards, early warning network. I'm sure there's a couple there that I've missed, but uh, yeah, without those guys, uh, we couldn't make it happen. So thanks to them. No, definitely, my man. And definitely thank you for uh, having some nice orderly colored cars. So it, it made it easy to uh, to track you guys on the track. But uh, no, in all seriousness, wish you the best of luck with the remaining nine races. Wish the team uh, the best of luck. And uh, yeah, look, uh, me being selfish, but keep putting on a great show and, and it makes my job pretty damn easy. Well, I've got a better night now. I've got a straight car, so Darren doesn't have to go out the back and beat me with a big stick. So <laughs> I'll leave yeah, it at that. That definitely, definitely. And on that note, I'll give a big shout out to Henry King. Uh, he got it. He was in one of those first crashes, 25 minutes of repairs. And uh, he said, it didn't matter. He was going to bang him out, get back out on the track. And that he did and, and race out. And that's, the uh, the resilience and perseverance that you guys uh, just spread throughout the tracks. So, no, congratulations, man, once again. And uh, best of luck. We hope to talk to you again soon. No worries. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We're going to do it in a weird order. That was the second placed uh, driver of Andy. Stop and, and, and slid oh. up. Sorry, Adam. I just, oh, no. Sorry, I didn't realize you were in a mid-convo. I just grabbed you for an interview without realizing. Uh, apologies for being rude. I should jump in and say hi and make sure that you guys aren't in mid convo. I apologize. Um, did you want me to drop you back up so you could finish off or? Uh, 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 we can get over it later. So good. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry about that. Uh, now you started off 11th in tonight's race, finished third, um, in, uh, look, we won't call it luck or anything like that, but it's really uh, when you get down to that last one or two laps, not to rate, you know, talk the rest of the raceway just yet, but once you get down to those one or two laps, uh, especially that last lap when all the cars sort of spread out into their rows and where they want to try and run from the four to the uh, the trival, uh, you, very, you very much seemed under the radar in that respect. You're able to sort of slot in behind the, uh, the top two and get there, but that seemed, and I don't mean this offensively, but that seemed to be your race tonight. Um, it, it looked like you just sort of, uh, I guess, joined up. You, did, did you have many actual partners on the track? It looked like you were just able to sort of pick and choose what you did from what I did see throughout the racing. Um, and uh, yeah. you know, just happened to be there when it when it, when it it mattered. Yeah, I'd, I'd seen the stars link up all, all night long at the backs, fuel saving through the early race and everything. Mm. And so I'd, I'd identified them. I'm like, I, I want to be hitching my wagon to these guys tonight because I've got no teammates in this series. Yep. So, um, 
I was able to, when I saw them pit for the green flag, I was able to dive in when I was right, because I was right behind them. Yes, yes, you did. Um, you did, didn't you? Yeah. And then, and then I was able to, to just stick with them. And I knew that I didn't have the outright pace to try and be the lead car, to yep. try and go around them or anything. So I'm like, I'm just going to have to sit behind them and just see what we go. Cause I just knew I didn't have the pace. Uh, definitely. And that's, I think uh, that was when I not noticed you, but really saw that it was when, uh, yeah, it was when uh, Adam, um, Adam, uh, Andy and, and, and D Mac Darren, uh, sort of uh, got those cars back up to the front because you're right, they were, they were right at the back and they just sort of, yeah, you could just just sort of see them plotting away. You knew something was going on and then uh, I did, I saw you sort of, I think it was, um, it would have been uh, when Adam Malone was still with the group and there was someone else, I think, in the top five. I'm just scrolling the names. Might have been Colin uh, Bruns or uh, Shane Mello for a while. I know he was up there. There was a couple, Dave Douglas, a couple of other guys. Um, but it did. You could see you jump on and, and just stick with that top three car pack. And uh, as I said before, it's sort of similar to what I say about guys that use the outside line to push themselves to the lead and drop down. It's if you could find a group and stick with them. The uh, it doesn't matter if you're faster, or, you know, if you're not too quick or, or what. You can yeah, you can just hook on, ride their coattails, and uh, and make the most of that sort of setup. And 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 look, you know, that's that's what you've done. That's what got you into the third place. Uh, looking at your lap times, 51.304 and 51.628, uh, you were pretty consistently quick on those last laps. Uh, you, in fact, um, because you were in the back of that pack, obviously you were a bit quicker than the cars in front of you there. Um, did you feel, or did you, oh, you obviously gained a bit of confidence, but once you really sort of grabbed hold of those, the, um, I forgot to ask what their t name, the race, race team's name is, I call them the Tiana um camping the team. southern stars southern stars thank you very much once you hooked up with the southern that's stars that's and andy joe yeah yeah um it, it must have must have been a bit of a relief for you having that sort of reliability knowing that their teammates are not really going to screw each other up so as long as you just sort of sit in the back and and not you know upset them too much you could no matter what they were going to do you were able to sort of ride that uh run to the finish um I guess in that yeah, hundred percent. It was just to... making sure I stuck there. I didn't <laughs> lose the. You don't lose the tail. You don't. You don't get too much of a gap. It's obviously it's not that hard, but it's it's making sure you don't have one mistake that'll kill your race because one gap on a super speedway and she's all over. Yeah, and we did see that a couple of the cars. Um, you know, and and it's it's a little bit of tire wear. It's a little bit of tires. Obviously, if you're running a pack for too long, those tires are going to get really hot. Um, we saw a few guys coming out of four where it wasn't really where they lost control, but the car would just float or just drift up the track a little bit or the rear would just come out. You would just see a slight bit of movement that you'd have to fight, a little bit of momentum loss. It kept everyone tight, I think, uh, and everyone really handled it well. Talladega, fortunately, is a, you know, you can see clearly three wide lanes. So three wide's not a big issue. So you saw a couple of guys there who didn't want to kill their runs or go a bit higher. Uh, it seemed like people were sort of making allowances on what they wanted to do versus what they needed to do. And, and that, I think, goes towards uh, a successful super speedway if people don't try and force the issue. If they want to keep their run going, they go up high, not up the middle, and, and, and making smart choices uh, like that. Yeah, part of it is just keeping the car clean. You don't want to have too much damage that slows it all down. Just keep keep your nose clean and be there at the end. Yeah. Yep, definitely, definitely. And I mentioned Henry King. He was a uh, he was a, a twenty five minute repair from the first crash. And uh, even he said in the chat, "Oh, I'm going to fix it. I'm going back out." And that, you know, that is the type of perseverance, resilience, as I said to uh, to, to Andy, that that you do need in these sorts of races. You can't give up. You can't have a caution where you fall to the back and you go, "Oh, that's it. I'm done." You know, like uh, as you know, as as we said, Darren McKenzie, Andy Barber, Adam Malone, they were. The literally the the twenty eighth, twenty seventh, and twenty sixth cars at one point in this race. Um, it's uh, it's just pa patience and playing the right cards. Or if you yeah, like yourself, definitely you're... fuel save it early. You, you you could I could tell early that they they were towards the front and they just started sliding the whole way back in that first in yeah intentionally and they were just lifting everywhere. Like I was sitting behind them and you just you just half throttling, just just saving fuel. Which if I had it gone green, they would have been in a great spot anyway. Sort of thing, so they'd set themselves up for a good race. 
definitely definitely did and uh you definitely can't uh can't um blame you for noticing that throwing a uh, a hook onto the back of one of their cars and uh, and going along for the ride that is uh, probably one of the fundamental sort of uh tactics you you, you can try in these especially in a truck race you know it's if you don't have a partner make one um i try and do that myself and uh yeah, it's I don't mind you know being the second car to that person in front if they're going to help you if it's going to help you if it's going to benefit you points wise, uh, it's a winner for everyone and with nine races left in the season yeah you want to sort of maximise those top five, uh, especially podium finishes as much as you possibly can. Now uh, you mentioned you didn't have any teammates but uh, obviously uh, in this I racing world that we we live in there's a big family friends family and sponsors. Uh, sometimes. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to, mate? Uh, just the team, just Kingsman um, racing, That all the lads. They don't normally get into the, to the trucks in Australia yep. that much, but uh, yeah, just the team. Uh, definitely, buddy. That's uh, Look, a good team, whether it's a couple of mates just racing or whether it's a finely tuned machine, you can definitely learn and grow from it. So uh, it's um, uh, it's always a benefit. And uh, look, it's, it's you know, Look at you, you've sort of, uh, you're the, the sort of solo in that top five, top ten out of a number of team races, and uh, you still showed them how to get it done, so congratulations. Uh, off to Dover, and I think, is it Dover next week, and then Kansas? Yeah, it is, so... Uh, yeah, Dover. A couple of um, bigger tracks, then we're going to get to the regular season finale, and then... Uh, We've got the second stage to go, so uh, it's it's getting a bit exciting. Uh, some of the playoff points are uh, already con locked in. Uh, do you feel like Dover or Canvas? Uh, Canvas, Kansas. Uh, you'll be looking at another podium, another top five. Ah, uh, probably not. Um, I did all right at Las Vegas earlier in the year. Yep. But then last week at Texas, I wasn't wasn't that fast. Um, Dover. Probably gonna, I'm probably gonna struggle. It's probably pushing my ability a bit, and then Kansas, you never know. Maybe, maybe not. But probably, seeing that you're racing against teams that like and very experienced drivers, I'll yeah. probably be mid packs. Probably all that I'm gonna get. But every race, you just keep doing, and you just keep getting better, and and just enjoying your racing. That's 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 what I'm looking at. So. Definitely, definitely, yeah. You'll you'll take a little bit away each race from uh, from some of those guys, regardless of how you know you feel you're at school level, and uh, you'll take it to the next race and uh, go from there. Well, look, best of luck, man. Wish you all the best uh, individually uh, for uh, any other races you do have before we get back to next Friday night. Best of luck uh, with whatever you got going on with the Kingsman as well. And uh, yeah, we hope to uh, we'll definitely see you next week. We hope to have you back in the booth sometime soon. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Andy, Adam, drop Adam back up there. All right. Hopefully he's not mid conversation, and I've rudely dragged him out of one like I just did with Adam. But we're going to get up to our winner uh, here tonight. He started uh, a few rows back from his teammate who had the pole position at the start of the race. Uh, was actually third row inside, but Darren McKenzie after a bit of a um, well, I mean, you guys seem to be fairly in control of your race fate, the entire race, all three of you, yourself, Andy and Adam. Uh, but once it was all said and done, my friend, you got the win. Congratulations. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, it was, um, that was a plan, just sort of chill most of the night and then see where we can position ourselves after the last bit. So um, I think we did get caught out. We missed the pits on the second last time. Mm -hmm. So... We only had about 22 laps of fuel left there, so we figured we're right, we'll we'll just sit back, chill, save what we can, still go in and race home. And um, I think after all the pit stops, yeah, we come out, we took the lead, and it was a, a hell of a battle there oh, uh, <laughs> towards the end there. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a great race overall. It's Enjoyed it. Definitely one way to describe it. Um, now your main opponents, uh, throughout that last sort of part of the race and, uh, especially with the uh, inside outside line battles, you had, uh, I spoke to Andy Batter, but Ruben, uh, Ruben Phelps and, uh, and Lockie, uh, were, were doing great. Then you had, uh, Shea Mello and, uh, Dave Douglas, 10 in the 70 truck also, 
uh, getting amongst it. And uh, it, it's it's not to turn this into a Bob Winges about people pushing to the front, but uh, I say it all the time, you know, we saw it at the start of the race. Uh, outside line guys who get pushed to the lead and then drop down and leave the second car behind them up on the outside line. Uh, I just think that's like uh, it's it's that unwritten rule you shouldn't do it because you're going to get caught left out so uh, um, it was good to see those two car battles I thought you guys were in a good position no matter where you were because you obviously had the three cars and three cars working together is going to be a, an, an unbeatable draft line uh, but uh, I guess it must have been pretty fun having guys like Ruben and Lockie and then uh, Dave and, and uh, Shay doing those outside line battles keeping you guys on your toes Oh, yeah, definitely. You're, you're trying to keep up with them or at least, yeah, toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with them, but you're watching temperature, oil and water temps, and you, you can't push for more than probably a lap and a half, two laps at most before you're pushing into the red. So it, it's a it's a battle of track position and uh, looking after the car as well. So definitely. that's when they got down in front of us. It's, I just pushed a little bit too hard and... I couldn't go with them when they went round us. Um, but yeah, from there, it was sort of reevaluate and see where we sit. And the high line started coming past us again. Yeah, so it was right up until the end where we were strategizing every lap. I feel like the high line uh, can be real deadly here, especially if they run the middle. Uh, sort of if you break it down to those three lanes with the, the, the broken white lines, uh, it's, it's that middle lane that the outside line will generally run. It gives them a little bit of side draft off the inside line as well as, um, you know, that that sort of... I, I feel like uh, if you can run the middle lane outside line corner-wise, uh, you just keep that speed up a bit nicer. You get that nicer run down the back stretch and into the trival. But you can also poke your nose up into that third lane a lot of the time and, and, and get a bit of that cooler air on the car, cool it down, pop it back in and, and keep it going. I think that's where the outside line was really dominant and, and was doing its best work. I feel like the straightness and the pushing on the inside was what kept the inside line in the challenge as well. So it was sort of like two different lines, two different tactics. The outside line wasn't as tidy, but was able to, to keep the engines a little bit cooler. The inside line, yeah, that that, that pushing uh, was, was uh, some great, great pushing. Uh, now, uh, it was looking like, uh, I don't want to bring Adam uh, Malone down at all, but it did look like for a long while there that it was going to be uh, the uh, Southern Stars 1, 2, and 3 there. You boys were all going to take it home um, in that order. I thought it was Adam that uh, got loose from the front and dropped down the back and just left yourself and Andy to race, but I didn't realise it was actually you who fell back and then got yourself back into it and actually obviously got back into the lead. Um, apart from, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, what was going through your mind then? Yeah, well, it was one of the, one of the few times in the race I'd ventured up into the high line there, so I, I, I particularly don't enjoy it the way <laughs> no, I uh, no, experienced no. it. <laughs> but no, nah, the last two laps there, it was like, all right, guys, I'm going to count us in, we're going to line up, and nobody's lifting. And yeah, and he kept his word behind me, he didn't lift through the turns, he gave me a couple of bumps, and... He just caught me the wrong way on exit there and threw me across the track. And, yeah, I don't know how I saved it, but somehow I did. Um, he's screaming at me, get down here, get down here, there's still room. So I pulled down and we took off again. Uh, definitely. And then uh, Adam Johnson, uh, he had, uh, I think he'd seen you guys a bit earlier. He talked about uh, how you guys fell to that back of that pack. And we're just sort of, you know, obviously saving that fuel and... Uh, he, he knew, I think he knew that something was up, so he, he tagged onto you guys once you guys did come through, and uh, especially when it was uh, all three of you, as well as the um, as, as Adam Johnson on the back behind Adam Malone, and I think uh, there's a few other cars, whether it was Shea, Colin Bruns, uh, a number of other guys in that top five, but uh, no, he it definitely had uh, he'd thrown a, a rope onto the back of one of your trucks and was was holding along, and it was almost like he was the uh, the fourth teammate uh for a while there did you see him back there were there any concerns about him were you keep keeping an eye on him yeah on the last restart there we're looking who's behind us and that was the intention of us getting off to a quick start and lining up and we were hoping that adam and everyone else back there in four five and six mm. would start battling for positions and slowing themselves down so we could get a clean getaway but um yeah they seemed to jump with us pretty well they caught on and 
chaos ensued when I got turned a little bit and the pack all just sort of dived on top of each other. But um, I haven't watched the whole thing back. I don't think anyone crashed or anything. Everyone got through pretty well. No, and I think, yeah, I think it was up great. I think everyone uh, everyone was lucky they were wearing their brown race suit. But no, I think they all sort of came out of it okay in the end. Yeah, I'll check my mirror as I'm just saving it and it was like 20 cars wide behind me. It's like, oh no. <laughs> but uh, look, Talladega, uh, I was talking with one of the guys uh, in the chat, 1-9. He was here for uh, for uh, the 1-9 member, Jake Jackson. And um, we would, I, I said three. I thought three cautions was a good amount here at Talladega just because uh, a lot of the times the, the crashes go below the yellow, not up into the wall. Um, and uh, he went four, and and uh, I think uh, that's the over under on super speedway racing. I don't think uh, you guys added to that count at all. So it was overall, it was some amazing racing. Uh, there were a few hiccups there, but uh, a lot of the time, as I say, you guys got it going again. None more so than the save of the uh, the save of the week, at least, if not the save of the year. That for for yourself there. Um, to, to do that and still finish the race in first after a green white check it is uh is an absolutely monumental effort uh now a couple more races left in the regular season dover and kansas coming up uh 200 lapper and i think kansas is like 100 and something 180 160 maybe uh, let's have a look dover 200 laps 134 at kansas so uh couple of longer uh, shorter sort of length tracks longer laps shorter length uh you looking forward to the the run out of the end of the uh, sort of the regular season before we get to stage two yeah i don't mind over it's yeah uh, it's a good track and what was the other one kansas you said kansas yeah yeah that's yeah, it's a nice mile and a half or so it's always fun to race them definitely definitely i like uh kansas um there's a couple of tracks that sort of all have a similar shake i think chicago land kansas maybe charlotte uh, Sharp's a little bit longer. Uh, Atlanta. There's a few of those tracks that that just not as backstretch long as say Talladega or Daytona, but uh, just uh, slightly wider turns. And uh, yeah, it's sort of it's it's. I like them a little bit better. I came here for the super speedways, but like those uh, those those mile and a half is a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure. I think some of them. What's it? I don't want to make it sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but most of the time I don't. But uh, some of the, um, the, the, what do they call them, plate racing tracks? Oh, the restrictor plates? The restrictor plates and stuff like that. I think some of those tracks, those shorter tracks, but uh, those uh, sort of wider banks are a lot more fun. But uh, no, you can't go past Talladega. You can't go past Daytona. I think they're the two sort of universally loved or universally hated tracks on any season. Uh, I look forward to them. I love Talladega Week, so no. Um, all right, my man, look, I've waffled a bit too much already. You've got uh, bragging rights for the week until next week. Uh, before we let you go, we've spoken about a few of the boys that uh, deserve a thanks, but friends, family, and sponsors, who do you want to give a shout-out to? Yeah, the boys at Southern Stars, Adam and Andy, tonight, is, it was all team effort tonight, uh, 100%. Definitely so it was. Yeah, it should have been a 1-2-3, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can't predict the future on everything, so uh, it's still a great effort. And uh, yourself at Bobber TV, TV for putting the broadcast on. Um, the guys that put the race on every week over at uh, Australian East NASCAR E-Series. Yep. Um, and, yeah, we've got some team sponsors, RBI Trading Cards, uh, Tiana Holiday Park and Mish's XL Garage. Awesome, man. Looking forward uh, to seeing you boys do uh, some more great things throughout the season. Uh, I believe that one, two, three, that clean sweep is uh, not far, uh, not too far ahead of you guys. And uh, I think when we do, when you do do that one, because I think it is a matter of time, not uh, where, if, but when. Um, we might have to do a, a big sort of three-person uh, stars interview uh, instead of going one by one by one and just have you all in the room but uh, look i honestly believe it is not that far away so uh, best of luck individually best of luck uh, as a team my friend and uh, can't wait to see you back on the track next week all right thank you thank you all right that was darren mckenzie our race winner now i don't want to end the broadcast too quickly but i really have to, to rush thank you so so much for coming out and watching bobbeth tv 
on YouTube, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. No, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Bob. Uh, thank you to the Australian NASCAR E-Series. Thank you to the drivers of the Friday Night Trucks, powered by Beat the Dark Mental Health Matters. Thank you to Beat 